If you like to learn, read lots of books, or if you're a high school student, college student, medical student, and you just wanna learn how to retain all that knowledge to the end of the semester into your career, you're in the right place. My name is John Graham. I'm a USA Memory Champion, Grand Master of Memory, and Memory Coach. And this is how to remember what you studied for a long time. Let's say you wanted to be a musician, famous guitar player in a rock and roll band. Now, if you wanted to do that, you wouldn't just learn all the chords and notes one time and then be able to play in any band, right? Same thing if you want to be a chef, professional chef, work with Gordon Ramsay, whatever. What are you? An idiot sandwich. You wouldn't just learn all these recipes one time or learn a technique of cutting one time and then be an expert and cook in a Michelin star restaurant. It doesn't work that way. The key to any expertise is repetition, repetition, repetition. And it's gonna be the same thing with studying. If you wanna retain all this knowledge, you're not gonna be able to look at it one time or see it one time and retain it for the rest of your life. So what is the most efficient, easiest, most practical way to do all this, to remember everything and refresh it so that it sticks into that brain of yours for as long as you want? It's a strategy that's called spaced repetition. Spaced repetition. Spaced repetition is a strategic way to space your learning over time so that you remember more information for a longer period of time. Let me explain. So this is a graph showing how the human brain forgets information. It's a typical forgetting curve for newly learned information. Now everyone has a forgetting curve. We as humans naturally forget information or things or memories over time. This also will show you how to combat that. So if you look on the left side, this is the percentage of information that you retain. This is all theoretical just to show you an example here. At the top we have 100%. Let's say you learned something new yesterday and you remember 100% of it. At the bottom are the number of days that transpire. And you can see from when we first learn the information and we remember 100% that by the next day, we've already forgotten 20% of it and we're at 80% retention. So when you think about that information you just learned, you only remember about 80% of it. So you notice what happens when we review that information again at the top, we sort of fill our brains back up to that 100% level. You look at your notes again, you refresh your memory back to 100%. Now the key thing here is to notice, now it takes two days to forget 20-ish percent. It might not be the same exact 20% that you forgot, but now it's taking longer to forget that information because we reviewed it. And again, you review it on day three, you're back up to 100%, and now it takes three days to go back down to that same 80% level. So this graph shows two really key things I want you to notice. If you don't review information and learn it just one time, you're gonna forget it rapidly. The second thing, is the more you review that information, the slower your forgetting curve is. So you retain that information longer and you forget less of it over time. So spaced repetition is gonna show us how to combat forgetfulness with review in the most strategic, optimal way. The thing you have to accept is that school structures learning around exams. You learn the information, you study, you take the test, get a grade, and you move on. That's the way it is. So as a student, as a life learner, it's up to you to decide that you wanna retain this information longer into your career. Now I'm gonna show you how. Here are my four steps for how to use spaced repetition in your studies. Number one, take notes or highlight. So let's start at the beginning of this learning process. Whether you just started reading a book, whether you just started taking a class, you wanna start jotting down notes or highlight in the book. But what specifically are you looking for? You're looking for key points, vocabulary. What are the things that you're gonna to wanna to retain long-term? One tip here is to remember the 80-20 principle. The 80% of what you're learning is going to be things you already know, things that make sense, things that are just naturally intuitive. You don't really need to write them down because you already understand them. You want to focus on that 20%, the 20% of new information, detailed information, main points. You're going to have to get good at looking for those pieces of information. You're not going to remember every single detail in class. I highly, highly, highly discourage that. I know everyone's style is different here, but I suggest small bullet points, summarize the information quickly, quick notes, short highlights. Number two, review all of your notes for the day. 
Let's say you had two or three classes today and you took notes in all of them. Now most of that information is probably still fresh in your mind, but I want you to review it because it is fresh. I want you to keep it fresh. I recommend either reviewing your notes the evening after classes or ideally you want to do it the next morning. You've slept through the night, that information has consolidated, and you wake up the next morning and kind of see what you've forgotten before you start losing it with that forgetting curve. Number three, use the rule of thumb, double the days. This is probably the most important tip to follow, and it's just a rule of thumb, so this is sort of a guiding principle. If you review the information again the next morning, so one day later, if you double that one day, one times two, you get two days. So then you should review the information again two days later. After that second review, you multiply two days by two, and you get four days. So you should review that information again four days later. So what happens is you have a review pattern of the next day, then two days after that, then four days after that, then eight days after that, 16, 32, and so on. Of course, this isn't a perfect scenario. Obviously, it's exponential. At some point, you're gonna have to use common sense here and sort of feel your way through this guiding principle. If you're going back to review and you already remember like 100% of that, it's so fresh and easy, what I would do is space that review even longer. A good tip I recommend is that if you remember about 70% of the information when you review it again, that's a good sweet spot. Again, it's all about feel to find the minimal effective dose. What's the minimal amount of studying that I can do spaced out over time? And number four is flashcards. If space repetition was looking for a soulmate, flashcards would be it. They're a perfect match made in heaven. So let's say you've been following this rule of thumb, double the days. What you're gonna start to notice is you have not just one, you know, notebook full of notes, you got five or whatever for all your classes. You got highlights in your book. You got notes on various worksheets. All this information is sort of scattered. What you want is to centralize all of this information and flashcards is a great way to do that. What you're gonna find is when you do your first couple of reviews, you're gonna start to see what information is easy and sticking and that you don't need to review it again for a while. But you're also gonna find that 20% that's hard and you wanna start making flashcards of these difficult or new concepts, this 20%. Now you can write flashcards by hand the old fashioned way or I recommend an app called Anki. When I first started using Anki, I was intimidated by it. I just wanna warn you um, in advance, it looks complex, but it's not. I recommend finding a tutorial on Anki, setting up simple flashcards. The biggest benefit of Anki is that it incorporates spaced repetition into its technology. So you make the flashcards for your certain subject. All your chemistry notes are in one file on Anki, and you make all your math notes in another file. So you've got your flashcards separated. What happens is each day Anki will give you flashcards to review, automates it. So every morning you log into your computer or you look at your phone and it populates, it gives you the flashcards you need to review that day. So in summary, step one, take notes. Step two, review ideally the next morning. Step three is follow the rule of thumb, double the days. Get a feel for how it works for you and adjust accordingly. Step four is to use flashcards. So does this spaced repetition work? Is it effective? Now it's worked for me in amazing ways as a memory athlete, but I wanna share this quote with you that I read in a book. Now the book is called Fluent Forever, how to learn any language and never forget it. And the quote is, spaced repetition is extraordinarily efficient. In a four month period, practicing for 30 minutes a day, you can expect to learn and retain 3,600 flashcards with 90 to 95% accuracy. These flashcards can teach you an alphabet, vocabulary, grammar, even pronunciation. And they can do it without becoming tedious because they're always challenging enough to remain interesting and fun. If you want to learn more mnemonic tricks and techniques from a memory champion, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell for notifications, comment, tell me what you're interested in. I'd love to hear from you.